that. That he called to ask. <laughs> All right, we've got two more calls on the line. We're going to shoot through those super quick, and then we're going to jump into the Discord. So if you want to talk to us uh, for a couple minutes after the show, some Q&A, we're going to stick around for that. Um, and then, of course, Vanguard is going to be premiering at 3, 3, 3 o'clock. Uh, all right, so let's go to Patricia in New York. Let's see if we can get you on the line again. Hey, Patricia, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me this time? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Awesome. Uh, sorry about earlier. Um, I know you guys are running out of time, so I'll try to be quick. For sure. Um, I am an atheist personally. Uh, my brother just recently got married about a year ago. I was hanging out with him and his wife recently and the subject of kids came up mm -hmm. and at one point they were like something about religion and kids came up in the conversation and they were like we realized we can't have that conversation so we just put it in a box and put it on the shelf and I found out later that um, my sister-in-law is very much not interested in raising the kids with any sort of religion okay um, looking for some advice to try to help her convince my brother or maybe I can try to help convince my brother that raising kids with religion is or forcing them into the religion is not necessarily a good plan. Hmm. Well, part of me thinks that uh, this is, I, I'm 100% in agreement with you. I do not think that children should be indoctrinated. I don't think that raising a child with a specific religion is uh, is beneficial and sometimes can even border into uh, abuse, honestly. Um, not saying that that would be the case in this instance, but I'm on, on the same page with you there. Um, I am also hesitant about uh, encouraging you to broach that subject just because there there is a level of uh, it's it, if they have children it's going to be their children and they are going to have to decide that for themselves so I don't want you to have to take this on yourself as something you feel like you need to do um, so yeah. I just want to make sure that that's not happening that you're not taking this on yourself as something that you feel obligated to do because that would be something if, if that was being asked of you that would be outside of the scope of something that would be logical to expect right right um i do no, think I that the best advice that i've heard about this um and again this is coming from somebody who doesn't have kids and isn't planning on having kids um the best advice came from daryl ray um, on one of these shows and he said that the best way to uh kind of bridge that gap would be to have uh have them learn about all the religions, you know? So definitely if, if your brother wants to um, talk about his religion with, with his kids, that's uh, his, he is free to do that. But then uh, also uh, suggest uh, talking about other religions with them and presenting them all as options, all as equally as viable, quote unquote, um, along with the idea that, you know, maybe maybe they're all wrong, you know, and give them as much exposure to as many different worldviews as possible, uh, not only to make sure that they have the right and the autonomy to choose when they have the cognitive capabilities to do so, um, but also to uh, make sure that you're presenting it as not an either or, right? It's not a Christianity or nothing situation. It's a, well, I believe in God. Okay, which God? There are hundreds, there are thousands, there are different religions, um, and they all have their own uh, Christian, uh, Christianity creation stories. They've all got their end of the world stories. They've all got their own moral codes. Um, so my suggestion would be saying, okay, if you want to talk to the kids about uh, Christ, okay. I also want to talk to them about Krishna. I also want to talk to them about Thor. I also want to talk to them about the Buddha and all of these other, uh, these holy figures, um, in order to give, give those kids the best, uh, the best grasp, get their arms around as many different worldviews as possible. Can I tag team on top of that, Patricia? Yeah, of course. I, th I think what V said is spot on because it shows people, especially kids, it shows them that it's not the only belief out there. Mm -hmm. But I would recommend that you go one step further and that you also teach them about skepticism. And a very easy way to do that without being accused of indoctrinating them with atheism, without being like, well, how do you know that Jesus was raised from the dead, is to teach them a little bit about magic. 
take them to a magic show, show that when someone gets cut in half, they're not actually getting cut in half. You know, you can't always trust your eyes. And a great starting point for this, because I actually, I have nephews and nieces too, and I'm kind of in the same predicament. I'm like, I want these kids to fall in love with science and learn how the world works, but their parents are very religious. And so the question is, how do you communicate these things to kids that aren't yours? You know, it's one, it's not your it's not necessarily your duty or your obligation to, but you care about these kids. My approach is to, one, I am very out as an atheist. They know that I'm an atheist. So when they think of an atheist, Mm -hmm. they think of the friendly, loving, awesome uncle. And two, they... When, when I teach them stuff, I teach them about science and how the world works and how exciting it is, and I make it interesting, but it's more of kind of a Carl Sagan approach. It's like, look at how wonderful the cosmos is. We can go to a planetarium and learn about the stars, and we can go to an osteology museum and see all the bones of different animals and stuff and see how we're all connected and related. And then they get a, the foundations of science, and you, you give them a good foundation there, and then you teach them about magic – and skepticism, and you know, I know Matt has his magic and skepticism tour, at least he was doing a while back. Mm-hmm. There's a great course I just took on the great, not the great courses, it was a, a Penn and Teller master class that had these tricks that you can do to like make things disappear and stuff, and it's anyone can learn it, just you know, a handful of easy tricks you can learn in a few minutes. And then you can pull them out and surprise your, your nephews and nieces with these tricks. By and and show them, look, not everything that you see can you believe. You know, eyewitness testimony isn't always good. Things, you know, you can be mistaken, you can misremember, you can, you know, there's misdirection, sleight of hand, there's all these different things that can fool you. And when they start to see that, then they're like, wait a minute. Santa Claus wasn't true. Tooth Fairy wasn't true. A lot of people believe a lot of different religions based on where they're born. You know, there's reasons to be skeptical. Here's how we can test things. And you teach them how the scientific method works and how we can do tests and, and check and see and teach them that truth withstands scrutiny. And as they grow, as they get older and they develop these thinking school, these thinking skills, thanks in part to your help, then they'll be equipped to really come to a decision on their own. Yeah, and I mean, um, personally, we were raised as kind of like cafeteria Catholics, so we weren't super into it, um, Mm -hmm. but I know for a fact that myself, my brother, some of my cousins, even with that sort of lax Christianity, have developed serious anxiety disorders Mm -hmm. that were exacerbated by the church, and it kind of surprised me that he would still want to put his kids through that even if it's you know just to have a baptism for grandma or something Mm. yeah Um, and it and there can also be an element there i don't want to jump in and overstep here but if if your brother does have an anxiety and anxious i can talk if your brother is anxious around this topic and does have anxiety related to faith and to his christianity then this might be an attempt to alleviate that by making sure that he's covered all his bases just in case. If he's going to have kids, he's going to care about them a whole lot. He's going to care about them probably more than anything else in the world. And if he has that lingering doubt, if he does have anxiety around this, then he is going to want to make sure that he's protecting his kids and his kids' souls if he believes in that. Mm -hmm. Um, So that might also be something that he's struggling with, uh, in which case that might be something you could help him with before they actually have kids. But again, none of this is on you. This isn't something that you are supposed to be doing or something that you will fail at if you do not do these things. Um, The fact that you want to is great. Good. Okay. That's good to know. Um, uh, We need to jump to the very last caller super quick. Um, But call in again. Let us know how it goes. Definitely will. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you for waiting so long, Patricia. We appreciate it.